Hey guys, Tarko Cyclone FPV. Uh, good morning. Today is September 16th, and we are actually going to be looking at this product right here. Uh, let me see if I can get this ready for you. Uh, there. All right, so there you go. All right, so we're going to be working on the X9 Lite today, right? I've had these in stock for a little bit, but I wanted to make sure, I wanted to test it first to get the firmware kind of where it needed to be. And today I'm actually going to be doing that. So what you see on my desk here is other than the razor blade, you see a, I have a, a, an SD card reader here that'll go into my USB port, and this is the way I do it. Um, I don't know if you have to really follow this method, but it's kind of a quicker way for me. I also have a R, um, um, RSXR right here, uh, which is going to be running the D16 uh, protocol, and then I have um, uh, an ACE32 just so that we can plug it into Betaflight and C, and then obviously I have the X9D Lite, right? So one of the things we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing the firmware update on this thing. And um, to do it, uh, it's a little bit different than normal, at least when I usually do it, because um, I usually use OpenTX to download all my firmwares, but right now I'm not gonna be doing that. I'm gonna be using FrySky's website. So I've done this already, but now I'm gonna erase everything I did so that we can do it together, all right? The only thing I'm not gonna do is re-download the SD card contents. Right now it's like molasses from the website. So I've done it once, you'll see it in zip file format, and then from there you'll be able to, I'll, I'll make it like we downloaded it and you could follow those instructions. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to um, split the screen up. Now, I'm gonna plug in the USB card, I'm sorry, the SD card into my computer so I can format it again because this will be the second time I've formatted it. So I'm gonna highlight it here and I'm gonna click Format. Leave everything like it is and just click Start and click OK. All right, because I want the card to be completely wiped clean uh, before I put it in the radio, before I do anything. Now, that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up my Downloads folder because I've already downloaded everything and it's not gonna really make sense if you see it already done. So let me do that. Okay, so I've created a folder and I recommend you do the same. I've created a folder called transmitters, especially if you have more than one transmitter, this is gonna be the way to go, right? So in my folder transmitters, I have the X9 Lite right here, right? In this, I have created the files that I need. Now let me show you what I've done. So I'm gonna delete all of these, right? So we can, all, we can do it from, okay. You will download these two files. Now where you get these files from? Go to uh, Cyclone FPV right here, and I've already got this open, but I want to show you guys how, to, how we do it. So it'll be, it's quicker. If you want to go this route, it may be quicker for you. So just come up here and type X9 Lite. I think that'll get you, okay, there it is. Now click on that. And under the first, uh, second tab here, video instruction tutorials, I'm doing the video right now, so that'll be posted. But here's a direct link to the PriceGuy website to download the downloads for this particular transmitter, okay? So what you're gonna do is when it comes up, there's two things you're gonna download. You're gonna download the SD card contents, which I said I'm not gonna click right now because it takes too long. And you're gonna download the firmware. Now, I have not done this firmware posted up here. I did this firmware right here. So this is the one we're gonna be working with, and then I'll go and read about this one and what it does later to see if I need it. Um, but for right now, I'm downloading just the 1.9, which is, stands for July 20th, 2019 uh, uh, download. And here it says the 23rd, but I'm going by file number, okay? So um, what we're gonna do is you're gonna click download, and then they're all gonna to go to your downloads folder, right? I'm not gonna mess with that either. Uh, what I am gonna do is show you my folder. Once I download them, I'm gonna move both uh, files, zip files, into my X9 Lite folder that I created, okay? And then I'm gonna extract them. I'm gonna right click on the X9 Lite one, and I'm gonna click, uh, where's my extract? Extract all. I'm gonna tell it to show the files when it's done, so click extract. It's gonna go pretty quick, and there, the, there are the files. Go back to your X9 Lite folder, and there you can see the files. Now they are two file folders deep, and I don't know why it's like that, but I will clean that up. And what I'll do is I'll usually click this one. Here's the files I want right here. So when I go back one, I'll just cut this and go back to my X Lite and just paste it here. And that way I've gotten rid of having to go a second folder deep, right? So it's gonna be right there, and there it is, okay? And now the next thing, I'm gonna leave the zip file here because in case you ever damage the file you're working with, at least you have the originals, you don't have to download them. Okay, here's the SD card contents, it's a bigger file. I'm gonna go ahead and right click on that and tell it to extract all. And I'm gonna tell it to show me the extraction files when it's done. It's gonna take a little while. But one of the things that we wanna do here is this file is about 138 megs large, right? And most of that, about 120 of it, is different languages um, that they support on here. And if I'm only using one language, which is gonna be English, so therefore I'm gonna delete all the other ones. Two reasons for that, one, I just don't need them on there, and two, it makes the file transfer a lot faster. All right, because I'm gonna go from 138 megs to about 16 megs. Uh, so, I mean, not exactly one-tenth, but pretty darn close. All right, so at the 50, it's almost done extracting. We've got 2,076 uh, files. 
I think we only need about 500 or 300, between three to 500 of those files to actually do what we need to do. So we're gonna delete all the rest of them. I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a second. Okay, so almost done. 20% more to go. Turn my soldering on and off before I set everything on fire. Um, and uh, let's see. All right, so we're done now. And you're going to see right here, here's all the files. And like I was telling you, if you look at the size, if you right click and go to properties, you're going to see it's about 138 megs right there. Okay. So open that folder and locate your sounds and look at all the languages here you don't need, or at least I don't need. So I'm going to delete those, right? So I'm going to take those off and I'm going to take these two off right here. All right. Now I'm left with the contents being a whopping, look at this, and we're down to 16 and a half megs. Now we have a folder here called firmware. And right now there's nothing in it. What I want you to do is I want you to take this firmware file that we extracted and I want you to right click on it and left click on cut. And then I want you to open your uh, folder here and go to firmware and then right click in the folder and say paste. Basically we just want to put the, that folder into this firmware folder, okay? But we're going to leave it just like this. Now we'll go back to our X light. So if you know where we're at now, we were in our transmitters folder. Here's the X light and here's the two files that we downloaded. And then here's our card contents after we've put in the firmware and we've removed the languages, right? Now, the next thing you're going to do is go ahead and right click on this folder and rename it and just call it card contents. Okay. And hit enter. That's it, right? Very simple. Now we want to take that information and put it onto our SD card and we can do it this way while the SD card is plugged into the computer. If you don't do that, then you can do it through the OpenTX when you hook your cable in in a little bit, I'll show you, but this is the faster way to do it. So open your card contents folder highlight everything on it, right click and click copy, go to your SD card, right click and click paste. It's gonna go very fast now. So um, there we go. And once that's done, you can close everything out. You can close out here and you can close, you can close everything down and get back to your screen and now open OpenTX, right? And just have that ready because we're gonna be using OpenTX. Okay, and at the same time, now I'm gonna go ahead and eject my SD card. So let me go do that. Uh, no, I'm gonna click no. And if you see any messages like this where there's a new firmware update, this is because I was playing with the profile earlier. Um, you shouldn't see that, but I'm just gonna go ahead and eject the SD card. There it is. All right, and now I'm gonna take it. And now I'm gonna give you a screen, a split screen of the radio, and there we go. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take the SD card out. Don't forget on these radios, it goes in upside down. So I'm gonna put it right in the center slot here, upside down, and I think I need this razor blade here to kind of push it past. My fat fingers don't get that. There we go, all right. Now, with that done, and I've got my 18650s in here, right, ready to go. All right, I'm gonna take my micro USB cable, and I'm gonna, first of all, I'm gonna take my two sliders, and I'm gonna press them in and press the power button, and then as soon as I press them, I'll let them both go, ready? There, that's it, all right? Oh, hold on, there we go, all right? And now I'm gonna, I'm about to get into here, into my DFU mode, and I'm gonna plug in my USB cable, just like that. And now it says USB is connected, okay? From here, I want to go, and I'm gonna see my radio profiles because I want to, um, I wanna delete this one so we can do start over. So I'm gonna, whoa, okay, it's opening the uh, contents of the SD card, that's fine. So I'm gonna go to settings. If you don't have a profile, you won't have to worry about this. I'm only deleting mine so we can do it, set up a new one together, okay? So I'm gonna say settings radio profiles, and I'm going to add a new radio profile, right? And um, they do not have the X9 light here. And I don't know if there's like a default way to not have it try to select anything. But for right now, uh, I'm just going to leave it X90 plus. I'm not going to change anything else here for right now, except I am going to call this X9 D or X9 light. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then I'm going to come down here to this area, other settings, I'm going to go and select our SD card contents folder which we did. So if you go back to your location, now mine's under transmitters X9 light, there's my card contents folder. So I'm going to click on it and make sure it says card contents at the bottom here and click select folder. Okay. My backup folder, which we have not created yet, we're going to create that. So we're going to go to um, downloads, transmitters, or for me, X light. And I'm going to make a new folder here called downloads. I mean, sorry, called backup. Okay. We'll click okay. And then you can see the folder name back up here. Click select folder. And I'm just going to change my thing just for the heck of it. This is totally not important, but I try to keep consistent. Um, I will do uh, enable uh, automatic backup. 
and I will, let me see, I'm not going to worry about any of these right now. Um, and that's pretty much it because we're not downloading the firmware from their site, from OpenTX right now, so I'm just going to leave it like this and click OK. All right, now, um, assuming that you did not copy the stuff over from the computer to the SD card, let's say you didn't have an SD slot available or whatever, and you just have your SD card in the radio, then what you're going to want to do is you have this icon right here, which is a synchronized icon between the folder on your computer and the SD card inside the radio. So you'll click that because you want to transfer the files over, all right? You want to make sure it's po uh, pointing the right direction from the source. This is the source card contents, and this is the location it needs to go to. And you can easily just click run test, and it'll compare. Like mine is going to compare right now. Watch. So I'm going to show you. It's going to go really quickly, and it's going to start comparing the files on both. And this is just a test for me to make sure I have no errors. What you'll do is you'll do the same thing, but you don't have to have the test done. And I'll do it again without the test. And you can see it goes much faster than it does here. But basically what you want to do is you want to make sure that everything that's on that folder on your computer transfers over. And if you're not going to do it the way I did where you plug in an SD card, then um, you're going to do it this way where the SD card's inside the radio and the computer's just transferring it back and forth on its own. And, and, and OpenTX is going to compare the two. Okay? Hope that makes sense. So let's just wait a minute. It's going to take just a minute. Um, this part of it always takes a little bit longer. But once you're actually not testing and you're actually doing the copying, and it's like instant. I don't know why the testing takes longer, but I guess it's reading the files. I, I, I would think it reads them no matter what before it writes to make sure it's copying the newer one. But uh, okay, so it's done now. I'm going to click close and we're going to do it again. This time we're going to do it for real though. So you click this and look at the way it's set. Both directions to the radio first, which means your computer is always going to update to the radio in that direction first. And then it's going to say here, copy only if it's newer or different. Okay. And so that's fine. So now I'm going to remove the text, test uh, run only option. I'm going to click OK. Now watch how fast it goes. It's done. My files are equal on both sides. And as long as they're equal, this thing is done. Now that that's done, I'm going to come over here to my uh, right firmware to the radio, which is the icon. I think you can see that on this split screen. So that's right here. It's the third one from the bottom. And it says right firmware to radio. I'm going to click that button. And um, I'm going to load. Uh, let me see. Let me hold on. Where am I at? is right firmware to, yeah so I'm gonna load the firmware and the firmware is gonna be the one that we downloaded right here okay so I'm gonna double click on the bin file and it's gonna and I'm gonna click write to TX and it's gonna automatically write to my radio as soon as it's done we're gonna click close okay there we go all right and we're finished for right now now we can do all the other stuff later like read the models and see what we have but I don't have any I don't have anything set on here so there's nothing yet okay so now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to safely eject by clicking this icon at the bottom here. I want to eject uh, my drives. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. There we go. Now I can unplug the micro USB. Okay. And now we're going to go to a different screen setup like this one here. All right. So now that we're done here, we've got it out. So now what we want to do is we're just going to go to the exit. All right, so I'm going to use this scroll down here, go to the exit, and hit enter. I think I got it. Hold on. Enter. There we Welcome go. to OpenTS. Throttle warning. Yeah, okay. Now, that's fine. It says fail safe, not set. Now, what you want to do is go ahead and hold your menu button down, press page, go to your firmware, find your folder that you created, the uh, X9 Lite 19720, hit enter. Find the bin file, hold it down, and make sure you do flash bootloader, okay? And then what we're going to do is hit exit, 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 and then I turn it off. Okay, and now I'm going to turn it back on. Welcome to OpenTX. Okay, now, some of you, depending on when you do this, might get an error about the EEPROM not being right. That's fine. It's going to automatically format it then and reset it. So don't worry about that. Okay. You still don't just click through it and then go ahead and do what I just did by holding the menu button down, going to your page uh, one time to the page, go to your firmware folder, go to your firmware and update your bootloader. Everything will be fine. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to test this and make sure because this was running on the access uh, firmware. It does have the uh, protocol, which is an encrypted protocol, but we want to be able to use our old RXSR and that's what these file updates are doing. Right? So here I have the RXSR. And I am, and it's attached to a, um, like I said, it's attached to a NACE32. So I'm going to try and get this to plug in here. All right. And hopefully I can make this work. I do need to put in the uh, beta flight. I do need to put in the micro USB so we can see it on the screen. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share the screen again. 
and we're going to do it like this. So we'll split screen it now between the two again, but this time we're going to go ahead and open Dataflow. All right, well, as you're gonna notice right now, I ended up changing the receiver. I mean, I've been at this for now about an hour, and the whole time I forgot that this receiver, the RXSR that I had, was damaged. And so here I am trying to do this, and I'm thinking, oh, I'm gonna get it ready for you guys, and I couldn't, right? So I've actually switched it out for an X4R, and uh, we're gonna accomplish the same thing. I've still got it wired up to the nays. I just kind of quickly wired here, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go through the binding process. So I'm gonna go ahead, like I was doing before, I'm gonna go ahead and hit um, the uh, page button, Sorry, I do that every time. Hit the menu button, then hit page, and I'm gonna scroll back until I have it set for the D16. And I am still on one, so I'm gonna press this and go start binding at 16, uh, 9 through 16 telemetry on. All right, now I'm gonna hold the bind button here just to show you this process the same. Flip this on, and we should see red. And there's a solid green now with the red blinking. I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit without moving too much there. I, I, I think I'll keep it right about there. So you can see that done. So now with that done, I'm gonna hit exit, exit again, and exit again. And now I'm gonna turn around, turn off the radio. I mean, sorry, turn off the power real quick and uh, turn it back on. And now what we should see is a solid green light, which we do. Uh, the light is now solid green. So now I'm gonna go into beta flight and connect. And I'm gonna go to my receiver tab. And as you can see, we have full function, okay? So as far as I'm concerned, and, and this thing, uh, the radio actually, um, I do need to set up the date and everything else. I haven't done that yet. So let me go ahead and do that. Nine, uh, let's see, the year is 2019. And the day is the 16th. Okay, time-wise it is 12, 20. So this has been going on for quite a while here, and I think where it gets me my, uh, where is my time zone? So there it is. I think we're negative six. Okay, so I think that's right. I think everything else looks good. So I'm gonna exit out. So there's our setting right there, and we do have full function, right? So this does, this new firmware does make everything compatible to go back to the 16 channel system. Now, from what I understand, and, and I'm gonna verify this, uh, let me switch screens here. So I will verify this again today, but I'm pretty sure I got this right. Uh, I heard it right that the eight channel receivers are not gonna work on this right now, but they are gonna come up with a module to pop on the back and that module will allow for eight channel receivers as well. Um, and I think other than that, I did see the, up, up, uh, uh, the update to go to the new access firmware on the receivers. I'm gonna hold off on that. I've got way too many receivers. I'm not gonna mess with it. Um, but if you want to, all you do is gonna flash your uh, um, flight controller, sorry, your receiver and then you can use the um, access firmware I'm not I'm not doing it right now and I really don't feel like messing with any of my receivers to do that uh, but the new radios which are due to land here today we ordered them from Sky. they're on their way uh, DHL or FedEx says they're here they're gonna be here around lunchtime which is right about now those are the 2019 models that also come with access on them uh, I believe they have both protocols on them and then um, uh, I want to say that even the one of them's gonna have the long range built inside. I don't, I don't have to check it all, man. There's so much to learn in the next week of new radios that are coming out. But anyway, so this is the X9 Lite. And so the, you know, there was a jump there on the, uh, uh, the RXSR and I forgot that I actually had it in a bag and I forgot to label the bag that it was damaged. So I'm sitting there for an hour trying to screw around with it and it turns out that it wouldn't work anyway. But this example does show you that on the uh, old system or on the probably the most popular system right now with the 16 channels. It does work fine when you uh, use your firmware. And then everything else is pretty much the same. I'll be honest with you, um, it's a nice light radio. I mean, everything seems to be good. It's, I mean, it's a good radio. I, I really can't complain about it. I mean, it doesn't have, it, it's got as much knobs and switches as I need. Uh, uh, it is missing a couple things that I normally have programmed on my other one, a couple switches for that. But to be honest with you, um, I can make do with some of the rest of these, so uh, we'll make it work. But uh, I'm not going to keep rambling. Point is, it works. This is how you set it up. Hope that helps, guys. If you have any questions, uh, hit me up here at, uh, uh, where's my email? There you go. I don't know what I just did. Uh, yeah, I'm hitting all kinds of stupid buttons. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're going to try this again. All right, guys, if you have any questions, <laughs> you'll see why I'm laughing. I'm, I'm totally screwing this up, right? Um, it's been a long, long morning. been up since five doing this. Uh, okay, wait. First of all, subscribe to us here. Yes, that's what I meant to do, okay? 
And then when you do that, I guess whatever you do with Facebook, like us, follow us, whatever that is. And if you need to contact me, email me, targetcyclonfpv.com. Uh, and I uh, guess that's it, guys. All right, if not, safe flying. God bless. Hope all goes well, and we shall see you soon. Bye.